It's the quadrennial spectacle that captivates the planet. The World Cup unites soccer fans in passion and hope around the globe. USA, USA. On the pitch, this year's tournament in Qatar wonderfully chaotic already. Surprising upsets like Japan beating Spain. Their second comeback against a top nation of world football. And Saudi Arabia's opening game victory over Lionel Messi and Argentina, seismic. A stunner, one of the biggest upsets in World Cup history. Messi catching some grief from some gleeful Saudi fans. 32 teams qualify for the World Cup. Now we're down to the final 16. You have favorites like Germany, for instance, completely out of the tournament. But I'll tell you what, this also excites me because this is our opportunity for us to say goodbye to some all-time greats like Messi, which is like saying goodbye to Serena or saying goodbye to Michael Jordan. Messi has meant that much to the sport. Only eight teams have ever won the World Cup, all from Europe or South America. USA! USA! Soccer has a growing, hardcore American fan base. The 2022 U.S. men's national team is the second youngest in the World Cup. Its biggest star and best player is Christian Pulisic. His unofficial nickname is Captain America. I just love to play this game, to be honest. I don't think too much about, um, you know, individual things. I like the quote where, you know, if you play for the badge on the front of your jersey, people will remember the name on the back. This year's team is also the most diverse. 23-year-old Tyler Adams is the first black World Cup captain in U.S. soccer history. Representing the crest is probably the biggest, most significant thing you can do in your, your footballing career. Uh, we have three words that we symbolize with brave, diverse, relentless, and that's what we try to embody. If you haven't watched soccer before, I think you can connect with at least one person on this team from their background, um, you know, the things that they believe in. Uh, their personality. This is a young team. It's an exciting team. It's a, an enchanting team. I think they're awesome. They are hungry and they are so talented. American soccer superfan Aaron Brooks flew to Qatar to cheer on the U.S. in its must-win final group stage match against Iran on Tuesday. The noise was crazy, but the energy, everybody was so excited because we knew that it was win or go home, right? Everything was on the line for that game. Pulisic scores! Pulisic scoring the goal of his life, the only one of the game, and putting his body on the line to do it. The 24-year-old briefly hospitalized for tests, but cleared to play in the round of 16. It's a, a pelvic contusion, you know. Um, just, it's, it's not a euphemism, Henry. It's what it sounds like. No, but at the same time, it's not. Like, I didn't get, like, hit in the balls, but, like, it, it, it's not like, I'm all right. I'm all right. It was very painful. But, uh, like I said, I'm getting better. After their win to send them through to the knockout stage, this human moment on the pitch between American Anthony Robinson and Iranian Rahman Rezaian. They know there are, are far greater stakes than just winning a soccer match. The Iranian players bearing an untold burden. You know, there is concern that there will be repercussions uh, against the Iranian players from the Iranian government. Before their first match, the Iranian men's team did not sing their national anthem. And that was seen as a protest. Uh, solidarity with the women of Iran and with those who are protesting uh, for rights for women in, in their home country. And that's why we saw the U.S. team hugging those guys and consoling them and, and really um, caring very much for them. Soccer and politics are inextricably linked, especially at this World Cup, the first ever in the Middle East. Qatar's human rights record under intense scrutiny. The fact of the matter is, is that you know, whether you're talking the World Cup or whether you're talking the Olympics or any sort of global sort of sports get together, it's going to have to be something that's going to be clouded by the politics, the geopolitics of the nations that are going to go and participate. So, yes, there are going to be violations that many nations overlook in order to participate in this. American players like Adams have been forced to answer uncomfortable questions. First of all, you say you support the Iranian people, but you're pronouncing our country's name wrong. Our country is named Iran, not Iran. Second of all, um, are you okay to be representing a country that has so much discrimination against black people in its own borders? My apologies on 
the mispronunciation of your country. Um, yeah, that being said, you know, there's discrimination uh, everywhere you go. Um, you know, one thing that I've learned, especially from living abroad in the past years and uh, having to fit in in different cultures and, and kind of assimilate into different cultures, um, is that in the U.S. we're, we're continuing to make progress uh, every single day. Adam's poised and measured response, no surprise to his stepfather, Daryl Sullivan. It's self-explanatory. I think you see it. Tyler was chosen as captain because of what he does on the field as well as off the field. He handled it with class. He handled it with dignity, you know, and that's what he's about. Adam's former school principal and family friend David Seip watched Tyler grow up to be the star player he is today. We see on, on, on TV, you know, the incredible soccer player he is. Uh, but for me, he's a 10 times better person than he is a soccer player. Uh, he's got tremendous character, uh, integrity, uh, morals, ethics. Adams started playing pro while in high school, just a sophomore when he signed with the New York Red Bulls in 2015. This picture here, right, that was the day we had the, uh, the two graduations. Tyler graduated first, and then uh, we had Daryl's graduation after. We had to have Tyler's graduation first because he had to go play a game, yeah. right? The 2022 World Cup represents a chance at redemption for the U.S. men's national team. The whistle, it's done! It's over! dethroned the United States. Every hero needs to face a setback so they can have a comeback. Take me back to the moment where you knew that you wouldn't be in the World Cup in 2018. You know, my number one dream was to play for Team USA in a World Cup. So you can imagine uh, when I, when that really hit that, that we wouldn't be there. I, I, I couldn't understand why it happened. I, I, was, I was obviously so upset, so emotional. But, uh, you know, looking back on it, that motivated me that much more. That motivation has served Pulisic well. My colleague Maggie Ruley spoke to the superstar and his parents back in 2020 when he was already making a splash on the international scene and had his sights set on 2022. Both of us played soccer collegiately um, and then I played professionally. At two years old, <laughs> my husband and I both saw a very strong athletic ability. Both of us, in being into sport and being into teaching, we knew that he had a gift. What were some of the big life lessons your parents taught you and that sticks with you today? The number one thing I would say is just kind of putting confidence in me, uh, just telling me to always believe in myself no matter who I'm playing against, no matter where I come from. In just hours, the U.S. team will face its toughest test yet, a knockout game against the Netherlands, the only team standing between them and America's first quarterfinal appearance since 2002, back when Adams and Pulisic and many other players on the team were barely toddlers. It's a long shot, but in the World Cup, all you need is a shot. And that ball bounces in mysterious ways, and I wouldn't count out this U.S. team. I think most kids' dream is lifting the trophy, winning a World Cup uh, for your country. Um, that's the dream, but uh, just to be here and play and be a part of it and have that opportunity is, uh, is special, so I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it everything, that I, everything that I have. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.